Welcome back to the North American Journeyman. We've played a bunch of games, we've spent a bunch of money, and we've become the head coach of the Costa Rican national team. Okay, I'll take you through results, but first we'll just talk about finances. Because we had about $9 million in the bank. Well, I got hired around here, just shy of $10 million. And then, you know, we made a couple signings and I got them to, this is probably when I got them to improve the training facilities once. And then, you know, we've made some other signings. We're here in September already, so we're well into the mid-season. Things are going pretty well. Um, I'll show you the transfers, but then we decided to go ahead and upgrade the training facilities again. Because they're excellent, they're being worked on right now. But just to get another little half star, the last one cost 1.8 million. So I was like, this one's probably going to cost 3 million tops, you know, 4.9 million. So there went a lot of our money, unfortunately. But I'll show you who we brought in in the uh, off season, pushing into the season. We'd actually played a couple games by the time these transfers actually came through. On the outs, uh, we knew this was happening, but Yaya Lopez went out, this right back who's 30. He's not even getting game time at San Carlos, but he was a team leader. And so once he left, it pissed off a couple players, Aaron Suarez in particular. He's over it now, thankfully. Um, Juan Luis Perez, who's got the Costa Rican second nationality center back. Honestly, a pretty useful option, but he's 30. His value is pretty high, but he's not that he's not that good. He never played very good for us. He never really played that much anyways. He was like a third choice left back and like a fifth choice center back. So offloaded him for some money. And the rest of these are just loans. Making some money on them, though. So that's solid. The ins. Uh, Jonathan Navarro is one that we just bought because he was free. And he is continuing the club that he was at for the rest of the season. Just a youngster. Number 10 center midfield type player who looks like he has decent potential. So we'll see. I mean, he was free and he's on super cheap wages. So I was like, yeah, get him. Boom. Alexis Gamboa. I talked about him when I went to Costa Rica. The game that I went and watched between Liga and Alajuelense was... Um, I, I was most impressed by him. He was the player that I pointed out that I was like, he was the best He was the best player. And I think FM kind of agrees with me. He's a center back. We need center backs. He's Costa Rican. All the, minus, all the down arrows are because he's been injured for the past five weeks. But he's got lots of pros. He's only got 10 tackling. Strength is okay. He's not the fastest, but the mentals are good. And he's one of our best center backs. I actually just offered him the contract because his contract was expiring at New York Red Bulls. And he's our highest paid player. And then we decided to say, you know what? We need him right now. How much? Seven fifty. Okay. So we we sp splashed out for him. Whatever. Bring in a Liga boy back to Liga. Plus, I saw him play in real life. So next up are the two international slots that we decided decided to go ahead and lock in. Eddie Carlo. This guy has been on the top of my scouting list as the number one. A plus potential prospect for the pretty much the entire time I've been here. And he was always going to cost around two million, three million. And I was like, I don't really want to spend on an attacking player because we need defenders, but I couldn't find any. And then we brought Gamboa in and I said, okay, let's see how much he'd actually want to go for. And I think we got kind of a bargain on this guy. He's actually Brazilian with a Honduran second nationality. And he is solid. We're actually, we've been playing him over here, training him here, because I want to play the two Costa Ricans up top. 
and he's got this 16 dribbling. I think he could play kind of inside forward on both wings. And we kind of, if he's not working on one side, swap him over to the other is the kind of idea. So he's played, honestly, this makes it look better. He had a really bad start, to be honest. I was like, maybe this isn't the play. But he's come good. He's starting to really get bedded in. So I'm stoked on 80 Carlo. He's got lots of green. He's good. And then we went for the center back. Honduras has three center backs that were the top three center backs in my scouting report. And this is the best of the bunch. It looked like he was going to cost the, mo cost the most. I, I've said that twice and it's not rolling off the tongue very well. But he ended up really not costing that much. Both of these are rising. It's funny, it's 753 times. But anyways, he's also a lot of green. He's a good center back. He's our best center back. He hasn't really played like it yet. He's getting there. Already got 19 caps at 20 years old. Things I don't like. He's 5'11", 9 natural fitness, 8 aggression. Okay. But well-rounded. Can't really play out of the back very well, so we're playing short, simple passes with him. But he has green consistency. The other two, red inconsistent. And I'm sick of seeing red inconsistency in Central America. It's far too often. So we've played a lot of games. Let's take you through them. We lost the Supercopa again to Saprissa. This time on penalties, we were dealing with dynamic issues. We were dealing with fitness issues. We had two injuries in this game. We played all of extra time with 10 men. And we still made it to penalties somehow. And we lost in a penalty shootout. It didn't go well. Three to two. It could have been. Honestly, it was at this point, it was three to one. They just needed to score here, but they missed. And then we scored, and then they needed to score again, and then they missed again, and then Villalobos missed. Anyways, we lost. That's our only loss, though. So we've gone on to win in the league. We played Central American Cup. This was by no means easily done. In the second game, we were losing to this team, Municipal Limeñao from El Salvador. And we ended up turning it around and beating them 5-2. to two. But early, early on, I mean, it, was, it wasn't looking good. We weren't guaranteed to get through this group at all. And then we played Platense, who's having a horrible time, in the Central American Cup. And we got through. We're dominating, winning, winning in the league, beating Arediano. This is the cup. Won this one in extra time. We got there in the end. Drew San Carlos. Drew or scored 5-2 win against Perez Zeladon. Beat Saprisa 3-0. So we got them back again. And we just had back-to-back -back against Punta Arenas. And we're into today the Central American Cup quarterfinal. See if we can repeat in this competition. But interestingly... This is the game today, right now, that we're going to play against Santa Ana from Costa Rica. I'll show you who got through. The groups. All the Costa Rican guys eventually got through in second place, surprisingly. So Santa Ana, Montagua, Punta Arenas behind Comunicaciones. We got in above this Marquense team that we drew. Somehow, that was a nil-nil draw even though we peppered their net the entire game. And Olympia, ahead of Saprissa, negative two goal difference. They didn't get in until the last, the last day. So we're into the quarterfinal, win this game, and we qualify for the CONCACAF Champions Cup. But we'd like to repeat in this competition. Speaking of CONCACAF Champions Cup, I never really showed you what happened in that. Oh yeah, Toluca, who we went out to, ended up winning the thing. They went and beat America, and then it was an all-Mexican final until it's just one game, the final is. And Toluca beat Tigres. So the team we lost to, I mean, they beat us fairly handedly in the end, but it was close. Let me take a sip of tea here for the little throat. Ah. 
Um, so yeah, Toluca won. And then the Gold Cup happened. USA won this over Canada, four to nothing, I think. Look at the groups, though. Costa Rica, this is why we got the job. They didn't even make it out of the group of the Gold Cup. Neither did Jamaica. So that job became available as well. And then, yeah, Mexico lost to United States an extra time, and then Canada went through, got through Honduras. And we had, we went in just for the Costa Rica job. But this job was available. And looking at this team, I mean, they're better. One of the goals is to win this Gold Cup with not Mexico or Canada. And honestly, this probably would have been a better shot to do. I mean, look where they have players. Coventry, Schalke, Nottingham Forest, Wolves, Millwall, AEK, Aston Villa, Bolton. I don't know where Bolton's at these days. Where are they? League One. Yeah, never mind. Forget about Bolton. Toulouse, Hoffenheim, CSKA, Luton Town. Are they still up? Now they're championship now, unsurprisingly. Watford, Charlton, Millwall, like they have players that are playing in England around the championship level. That's pretty good for CONCACAF, but we picked up the Costa Rica job. I'm not disappointed, I'm just saying. We have our work cut out for us, especially because if we go back to the calendar, sorry, there's a lot to talk about, but you'll notice that we're playing the Central American Cup while we're playing World Cup qualifiers. So today there's, you know, nine players on international duty, but the second leg of this tie, we're going to have a bunch of players on international duty. And apparently I'm going to be in two places at once because we're going to be in Santa Ana. And right after that, I suppose we're going to be, well, it is home, so it's in Costa Rica. So I don't have to fly up to America you know, in lightning speed to get to that game. But there's four World Cup qualifiers. So one of those games that we're playing today is this El Salvador game. And these four games are all right in one international window. And it's third round, Group C. This will be our first game in charge. And we just have to finish second place in the group to qualify for the World Cup. But our group is not easy. Like, why can't we have a group with Mexico and Haiti? Like, USA, Honduras is tough. These are both Gold Cup semifinalists and El Salvador. So we're at the Costa Rican national team. We've filled in the staff with a bunch of guys. We're bringing, we're calling some of our players in and I'll introduce you to some of these, what the team is, but you can see there's you know, Gamboa is the only starter, really, from Liga right now, as it stands. But there's some things going on with this team. But I've just been talking, and we got to play two games. So we'll get to that one. That's the second game. First, we need to make sure that we qualify for the Champions Cup, and we need to do it in style in this first leg. So... We're going to do that. Velasquez is a little beat up and tired, so we're going to bring in Villalobos is annoyed because I didn't select him for the national team because I need a center back to play in that second leg, and I picked him. Oh, annoyingly as well, Fernando Alvarez, who I was banking on this guy picking up a Costa Rican nationality to open up an international slot has been awaiting paperwork to do so for about three months. So I couldn't, I decided to just not register him so we could register the, the Honduran guy that we brought in. But he can't play in this competition, so that's good. We'll go pretty strong. Neves is pretty tired. So we'll give Mongi the start. No, we'll play Neves in the first half. That's fine. He's on the yellow. Kevin Gonzalez is unhappy. We're probably going to play Aaron Suarez. 
yeah, that's fine. And probably just bring him out. Torres needs to get a little bit fitness. Salazar hasn't been the better. He has been injured. So we've been playing... Um, where is he at? Ruggiero. He's been doing okay. But I didn't call up Salazar. I did call up Ruggiero. But Ruggiero needs a little break. So I don't even know if we're going to have time for two episodes. I've just been going on and on and on. But it's a bit of a catch-up. There was a lot to talk about. I've played a lot of games. But I don't want to show you guys, like... I don't want to show you games. Wait, what? They're in bad form. They'll make it hard for us. I'm excited for Totch to play. They're challenging. Let's make it happen. It's at home. Packed stands. They're playing some youngsters. That guy's a left back. He's playing in the middle of the park. And that guy's garbage. Yeah, I was thinking to do something devious was to just call up all of their players. So they miss the second leg. Just to make sure we get through the tie. But that's a little... I'd like to think I'm a little bit above that, maybe. So yeah, we're, we're kicking on into the season a little bit. Far post header goes in. It's Quesada Thorn. Scores. He's off the mark. I was going to say that might be his first goal because he plays right back and left back. But this nice little far post, nobody marking him. Header. And Rodriguez just scared of the ball. Not a good trait when you're a goalkeeper. Let's that one in. 1-0, one good start. Yeah, if we can get up big. Hopefully I just don't have to show you guys the second leg because we got the big World Cup qualifiers going on. Two coming up within the next episode or so against USA. So we'll try not to get smashed by them. But it'd be nice to finish this tie off at home in the first leg. Santa Ana has been a surprise. I think they're actually in a decent spot on the table, but you saw some of their players and their ability is not very high. Like their uh, season preview. Contreras scores it. Nice. I was going to say make the cross, but Torres was hanging out offside. 2-0 early. Good stuff. We'll skip the highlights since I talked so long about what's been going on, but I don't know. What do you think? I think we picked up good signings. I'm disappointed about the depth with Alvarez, but he can't play in this competition, so that's okay. And then hopefully, eventually, he'll pick up that second nationality. Actually, his fourth nationality. And then... Maybe that has something to do with that. I'm not sure. Oh, we've been playing short corners. And it's been working pretty well. 3-0. Then there's the winter transfer window. But yeah, we've spent all the money in the bank. And we've upped the wage bill a little bit. Because all the players want new contracts. And, you know, there's money coming in, but... We can't really sell players to make money because they're just not that highly valued when they play here. It's just one of those things that keeps you down. Even if we had like some wonder kid. That's bad from Solis. Quesada Thorn just kind of let him walk inside. Like, come on, force him outside. I think we have stop crosses in. Honestly, we should probably just do this. Yeah, I have stop crosses, which I don't usually use these two, but I might start using them both. But this season has been a bit more of a struggle with dynamics and injuries, for sure. We're still making it work, though. I like to keep a pretty big team just to overcome the fact that we play 44 league games, plus all these cups and Champions Cup and Super Copa. And I mean, it's a lot of games for sure. So curling effort. 
stays in place somehow, but... Yeah, Salazar's been all right. Who did I say I was going to take out? Neves? We're going to do it fairly early. He's going to leave us on international duty for Mozambique, I think. So he won't be here for the second leg. But there's a lot of days in between those actual games, so it doesn't matter. Toch? Nice, from Toch. He's been really good. It looks like, though, Neves and Toch, who are our highest potential players, essentially, it looks like they're just about at their ceilings. We'll play Mongi. Mongi still has a high ceiling and needs a bunch of game time. Neves is pissed at me, though, about game time, so I promised him more. Um, what else do I want to do here? Give Torres a little rest. Montenegro's been out injured forever, so we'll bring him back. Now I'll show you uh, Eddie Carlo. Since he's not going on international duty, and he's still learning the position, so as much game time there as possible would be nice. I'm pretty sure we play the, the winner of Olympia in Punta Arenas. Olympia's up 2-1 in that match. Crossed in, Salazar header. I feel like he went for the more difficult option there on the head, but... Alvarez, if Alvarez picks up a yellow, he's out the next leg, so we probably should take him out. Because I only have two center backs for that game. I'm going to do that right after this highlight. Let's see, let's see what we can work here. Mongi. Ball right here to touch. Yep, play it to the right. Does Contreras. He's been okay. Mario's been the better right winger this season so far. Oh, Contreras has the two goals. Maybe I shouldn't speak too ill about him. Um, Yeah, Alvarez. Yeah, go ahead and show you Velasquez. Calderon's going to the national team. He's not going to start, but... Actually, he might. That is the major issue that we have with Costa Rica, looking at the national pool. Center backs. There's not many options. You saw Gamboa. He's the best one. He's the best center back in Costa Rica. So I called it out. I'm a good scout for sure, or agent. Here's Eddie Carlo. Takes a shot. Ooh, off the post. It's still there. Contreras tried to do the skip. The skip penalty call. It's four to one. I feel like we can probably get another one. Toch is bossing the midfield, but he's dead. That's okay. He can just play it out. Okay, Sada Thorne's a little tired as well. Martinez can come in and... Mario? No. He's on a hat trick. We can go Ruggiero. Just for a little bit. Is that what I want to do? Maybe David. For Suarez, actually. Yeah, forget that. We're going to go into this again. Because Suarez will probably get some game time in the next, in the international game. We haven't really been using this formation too much. I should be using it to close out games, but usually I just use it when I want to play certain players. I guess I'll praise the boys. I don't know if I've done that yet today. They like the praise, and they're going to go ahead and score me a fifth goal. That's what I'd like to see. The short corner. Carlo rips the effort. That hit both the underside of the crossbar and the right post. What a shot. He scored some crazy goals. He hasn't scored a lot of goals, but like penalty? 
all of his goals are pretty like that. That was powerful, well placed, just just unlucky. He's he's almost there. He's almost the superstar wonder kid that we need. He is Brazilian. Two to two with the missed penalty in the other game. This competition is dominated by Costa Rica, so. All right, good win. Uh, yeah, of course, of course we could. Yeah, even the best players have bad days. And he's been out injured forever. He's still getting back to it. And he's got competition now because Ruggiero is actually pretty decent. All right, Contreras bossed the game. Nice job from him. Just send the assistant. It's fine. Probably do need to do press conferences for the national team, though, because those might be relatively important. Let's give a talk to the team. These always don't go well. Um, I hate... It's been par for the course. Let's kick on. Yeah, they, they usually like that one. Pump the fists. Come on, boys. Two of my best players are Iffy and Morale. I know people don't really like international management. I kind of do, because you just pick the players and then just hope for the best. It's not a lot you can do. You can pick a tactic. Saprisa draws. Montagua smashes Marquenzi. Montagua has some good players outside of... The, they have one of the center backs that I was looking at, and then... Um, we're favorites over El Salvador. We should be. The captain. Who's going to be the captain for Costa Rica? Chacon? And Brandon Aguilera. That's probably fine. Look to Bennett and company. Yeah, let's, let's do the press conference. I'm just going to keep you here with me. So this is going to be kind of a long episode, but... All right, they're considered to be the weakest. Yeah. Um, there's harder tests to come. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we do need to put ourselves in a good position. It's actually really important. If we lost this one, it would be very tough to finish second. Will Freddy Alvarez be back? Oh, yeah. So this is a midfielder that we have that's old. We have called him up because midfield, center midfield is another problem. So... Center back, center mid. Fortunately, how you usually win football matches is by controlling the middle. Uh, yeah, he should be fine. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. I'm, I don't know. I don't think that went well. Slightly negative reaction. Whatever. What do I care about the press? What do I care? Hoping to strike while the iron is hot. Segura likes it. This is one of our goalkeepers. Oh, that's another issue in the middle of the park. Goalkeeper. Let me... Let's get to the game, and I'll introduce you to the team. USA plays Honduras. We play El Salvador. Gamboa re resumes training. He's probably going to start this game. Let's just look at the national pool and let's talk about goalkeepers real quick. So the best goalkeeper just off of this is Kevin Chamorro, who plays for Saprissa. You'll notice he's not fit. The next best goalkeeper is Brian Segura. You saw him. Arediano, 32 years old. He's not good. I'm not gonna play him. He just he doesn't look very good to me. We could play him. He's fit at least. The next best goalkeeper is this 17-year-old, Nacho Barceló. This is who Saprisa has been playing. Youngster? That's who I'm starting. I'm starting this guy. Because he's fit. They also have another youngster that I've been trying to buy. Dennis Solis I didn't call up because... Think he's just about at his ceiling. He's just he hasn't played great for us. So 
Goalkeepers have been the bane of my existence. This guy also at Saprisa isn't getting game time. I tried to buy him. He looks like the best option to me, to be honest, but he's just not playing. Apparently, he's only four-star potential, probably because he's 21 and he's not getting any games. But he doesn't come here because of his favorite Saprisa. This 17-year-old, though, I think will come here once he turns 18, potentially. We'll find out. But anyways, the team. Welcome to Costa Rica. Best player, Bennett. Left winger, massively pacey. Plays for Pumas in Mexico. He's worth a bunch of money. He played a bunch for Sunderland before he went to Mexico. He's good. Ugaldi plays for FC20 in, uh, is that Denmark? Or is that, no, that's uh, Holland, right? Yeah. The Eredivisie, he's a pressing forward who has no finishing. He actually does play up top for Costa Rica. He's got 31 goals and 62, 61 caps, so. Right wing, this guy's not great, but he's kind of the option right now. 31 years old, plays in Russia. Old Saprisa boy, Arediano, Saprisa before that. Gonzalez, this is the guy who's in Mexico that I've been waiting to try and trigger that release clause if they get relegated because it drops down to 1.5 million. He looks like a good young player who's going to be in and around the national team his entire career. So we're playing him as the number 10. He could also move up top if we wanted to. He's actually got better finishing. He's just, he's two-footed, like... I like this guy. We might actually do that. We might swap these two. See if we can mess up their defense a little bit. Um, in the midfield, Aguilera. This guy actually would probably be better on the wing, but we're playing as a center midfielder. He's at Norwich. He was at Nottingham Forest. He was at Alohalense in the past. He was actually out of contract at Nottingham Forest, and we were actually able to go in and offer him a contract, and I did and is around 800 k a year, and he decided to go to Norris instead. Then things get interesting. Roan Wilson is good center midfielder, plays for Saprisa, and that's it for midfielders. That's all we have. There's nobody else that's any good. We talked about defense. Chacon is dead because he just played probably for Saprisa. Gamboa is coming back from injury, so he's not fit. This left back, Vega, we've talked about him. He was traded from Charlotte to San Jose, so he's an MLS. And then Ian Smith. And then obviously we have our boys. Hall is suspended. We've got Quesada Thorne who can come in. But I'm going to start Smith this game. And I might honestly start our boy, Calderon. Like, this is what we're playing with right now. He's got three caps. We're going to do that. And Gamboa's coming back from injury. Ron Wilson's dead, but I really don't have another good option for this position. And this is kind of a must-win game. So we're going to play him till he's tired. And then maybe we'll bring in probably, like, one of these guys. The oldster. The oldster? The old... Oldie? The old boy? Even though he's definitely more of, like, a number 10... This Vega guy, yeah, Vega could come in, but he's also really tired. It's a ball winning midfielder. Also for Saprisa. Anyways, this is going to be, wait, set piece routines have been not set up for the match. Oh boy, you guys get to see everything. I'm going to do this pretty quick. Hybrid. Near post. Let's go for the counter. We got space. Deliver to the near post. Um, can we go back, actually? Yeah, no, that's fine. Near post. Balanced. In swinger. I probably didn't set up penalties, either. Ugaldi, 14 penalty taking. Anyways, that's it. Ron Wilson, Camboa are struggling. We need to do well, though. Sorry about all the chit-chat. Should have had it more ready. Who likes me? Marine, 
Ugaldi's aggressive. I don't mind that because he's uh, pressing forward. Some of the players don't really know what we're doing. I don't really know any of the El Salvador players. Maybe some of them. Chacon's unsure. Good thing I took you out. First match in charge. Can't wait. Confident bunch. Okay, it's away. We're in El Salvador. We're in the red and blue. Let's see if we can win an international cap. If we don't get qualified for the World Cup, maybe we get fired? I'm not sure, actually, if they're judging this competition. Gonzalez, are we going to score right off the kick here? Play him through. <sighs> Good effort. Romero tips it. Keeps it nil-nil. Roan Wilson. I like the effort. Good early start. Good early start. Let's pull up the table. Well, I think we want USA to just dominate everybody. So hopefully Honduras doesn't take any points off of USA. And hopefully maybe we can grab a draw from them. But I would say that it's unlikely because it's kind of this like current American golden generation. People are calling it, I guess, that is kind of coming into their like late 20s, early 30s. Like I looked at it like Christian Pulisic is 31. We'll look at some of their players when we play them next, but that'll be that'll be the next episode because this one's definitely gone on long enough. I mean, it's good from us so far. We should be able to handle El Salvador. I mean, like, you saw our players were pretty good. Like, I mean, Alawanzi, right? We're pretty dominant. Ugaldi's header, I don't really like that. Floating a cross and trying to head it from 10 yards away isn't usually the, the play, but... But I mean, like, there's only, what, one? All the Lindsay player in the team right now, and I didn't even want to play him, so... Hall would probably start, but Vega is really good. Like, we're set. Left backs and right backs, usually when I coach a national team, that's the position I always struggle with. But this is... That's a penalty. That's a penalty. I don't know who takes it. No, Ugaldi. We looked at it. He's got 14 penalty taking. Imagine if we made it to the semifinal of a World Cup with Costa Rica. That is the goal. For the save, I mean. Not necessarily with Costa Rica. Ugaldi slots it in. It's 1-0. The first ever goal under my tenure. Is that how you say it? Under my tenure? In my tenure? During my tenure? Probably during. Far post header! It called her on. I always backed him. I always backed him. That was an offside. No, no, no. No, no, no. VAR's checking it. I'm wagging my finger because it's awarded and we're up 2 0. Good job, boys. All right, we take Rowan Wilson off now. We need him for the game against USA. Playing a 4-2-3-1 against America probably isn't the best idea. That game's nil-nil. Suriname beating Panama. Mexico drawing with Haiti right now as they go up 2-1. to one. Probably rest Bennett. Rowan Wilson. Bring him out. That's a great first half. We look pretty... We look pretty good, to be honest. Good job, boys. I liked. I like what I'm seeing. We're gonna make subs, mostly just you. So Vega's coming in. He was a late addition, but now I'm like, do we go buy this guy because he's only 20? We need midfielders. He's really well rounded. He could actually play center back. Eight heading is an ideal, but even right back. What's his crossing? No. 
Can't. Can't cross worth a damn. Um, so, do I want to bring in... We'll bring in Bennett, or we'll bring in Torres probably for Bennett here in a little bit. Who, wait, who's Espinosa? Oh yeah, this is the Saprisa guy who won't, the winger who won't come to me because of his favorite Saprisa. I mean, we'll, we'll probably root for USA, right? Like, there's no way they don't finish in the top two. I mean, we're gonna want Bennett for the next game. We'll go to 58 minutes. For Bennett. And we'll actually bring in Espinoza. He's actually, honestly, like this guy's really good. I really want to buy him. He's five star potential, but because Saprisa plays that stupid narrow system, they never play this guy. M maybe he gets games up top sometimes. Um, any other subs I want to bring in? Maybe take Gambo out. It's risky. Oh, this is a center back that's in, that I'm looking at. He's 15 years old. Shakan is just dead. We probably let him rest the rest of the game. Maybe Aaron Suarez for Aguilera. Or actually for Gonzalez, probably. Plenty of time. Go make stuff happen. And then we got two more stoppages, two more subs. Red card by Mexico, and USA still hasn't scored. Don't give Honduras hope. Because if th this draw could be the difference between, oh, USA just went up 1-0. Could be the difference between whether or not we go through. Good lowdown. F find Suarez. He's on. It's 3-0. Yo, yo, good start to the international career. Close it out. Let's close it out. Good take from Suarez. Ugaldi, that ball right there to Marin is beautiful. Takes the shot. It's 4 nothing. Yo. Yo. Good start. Enjoy it while it lasts. Okay, Gamboa's going to come. You know what? 15-year-old center back. In my first game in charge, let's break a record. Let's break a record. Why not? No reason not to. I'm taking a look at my setup here. I mean, we, we don't need to smash him. I don't mind it, but let's keep the clean sheet, though, with the young goalkeeper. He does. Does he make the save? No, he just missed. All right, let's, let's just waste time. Oh, I'm using this. I'm using regroup. One last sub. Calderon can play out. Um, honestly, I'm not really bothered. Because I'm probably going to play two different outside backs in the next game. Who needs to rest? Probably Aguilera. For who, though? Freddy Alvarez? He's more fit of the two. He's not good. He's the old guy. He's going to get some time. Marin, he's a player I was not expecting much from, but he's on a 9.5. Suarez, what can he do? Plays it back to Vega, smart. Here we go. Crossed in. Espinoza. It's over. Sorry, this is a long old episode. I do apologize for those of you who don't, don't have a bunch of time. To watch somebody play football manager. 
But you're in CONCACAF, baby. You got all the time in the world. That's we're on vacation out here. Like, you guys take your your soccer overseas. You guys in the European arena, Australia, wherever you're at. You guys take stuff too seriously. You gotta you gotta live and let live. Pura vida in Costa Rica sometimes, and just watch a forty five minute episode of whatever. We're not gonna bother. It's always the second option anyways. Okay, I'm not going to keep you here any longer. Thanks for watching. We'll be back. Some more international action probably next time. We're going to play USA and then I think Honduras. Yeah, so the two toughest games in the group, well, the three toughest games coming up and then it'll probably be decided in the, in the two, home and home away, home and home affair in November. But thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and leave a comment. And you're all caught up. We're on to the next season. So thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you next time. Adios.